Hi everyone. Today's video is about pasteurization. Pasteurization is one of the thermal processing invented by the hero of safety, Louis Pasteur. In this video, we will talk about what is pasteurization, how it works, how it was invented, and the different accepted methods for milk pasteurization, and the effects of pasteurization on foods. Louis Pasteur was a French microbiologist and chemist known for his remarkable breakthroughs in the vaccine development, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization. In the 17th century, the prominent scientists of that time supported the theory of spontaneous generation, which means life exists from non-living matter. According to this theory, the living creatures spontaneously or automatically arise from non-living matter. For example, generation of maggots spontaneously on meat left out in the open air. But there were some scientists also who did not agree with the theory of spontaneous generation. They performed many experiments to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation, but failed to give evidences. The debate over spontaneous generation continued well into the 19th century. To settle the debate, the Paris Academy of Sciences offered a prize for resolution of the problem. Louis Pasteur accepted the challenge and disproved the theory of spontaneous generation by experimenting with swan neck flask and gives the theory of biogenesis, which means life arises from living matter. For this, Pasteur earned prestigious award from Paris Academy of Sciences in 1862. One day, some winemakers invited Pasteur to solve a problem they were facing. The winemakers could not figure out why certain of their wines were turning bad more quickly. Pasteur, with the help of his microscope, discovered that wine contains different bacteria. Some bacteria helps to produce the alcohol in the drink from the sugars under the process called fermentation, while other bacteria spoils the drink after its preparation. Pasteur's simple solution was to heat the wine briefly to kill off the harmful bacteria so that the drink would not go bad so quickly. This idea later on known as pasteurization. Pasteurization was soon applied to beer, juice, eggs, and most famously milk. This process also proved successful at destroying most yeast and molds without causing a phase transition in the food products. For his extensive research in the preservation of food, Pasteur is also known as the father of food microbiology. Now the purpose of pasteurization. The main purpose of the pasteurization is to kill the pathogens present in the milk and to inactivate the enzymes that spoils the milk so quickly. The second purpose is to extend or to enhance the shelf life of milk. Now how we can inactivate the enzymes? We know that pathogens and enzymes are basically having a protein structure. This is the structure of enzyme and this enzyme is in its native state. In native state, enzyme is properly folded and in an assembled form. When enzyme is properly folded, then only it can perform its specific function. So it means native enzyme is totally operative and functional. When this native enzyme undergoes heat treatment like pasteurization, then it becomes denatured enzyme. All the bonds present in the native enzyme they are broken down due to the heat treatment. Now this denatured enzyme loses its functionality. Now it is unable to spoil the food products. 
so the basic principle behind the pasteurization is to denature the enzyme so that they are unable to do their activity in the food products this is the design of pipelines of a typical pasteurizer this is the heating section and this is the cooling section the milk is poured in one end and it flows between the set of heating pipe for a set period of time this time is long enough to kill off most of the harmful bacteria present in the milk now milk from heating section enters the cooling section and flows between the set of the cooling pipes and emerged from the outlet pipe into the milk bottles so we can define pasteurization as a gentle heat treatment or a mild heat treatment below the boiling point of the water in order to destroy the pathogens and extend the shelf life of the milk followed by rapid cooling now the types of pasteurization the first type is low temperature long time method ltlt method it is also known as holding process or holder process also called batch method it is known as holding process because it holds the low temperature for a very long time and the temperature required for ltlt method is 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes the second method is high temperature short time method htst method it is also known as flash pasteurization it requires 71.8 degree celsius for 15 seconds only the third method is ultra high temperature method uht method it requires either 135 degree celsius for 3 seconds or 137 degree celsius for 2 seconds only it extends the shelf life of milk up to 90 days now in this table the temperature values are given for the food having high acidic ph like fruit juice and beer and foods having low acidic ph like milk liquid egg and ice creams if we talk about milk 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes which is a ltlt method and 71.5 degree celsius for 15 second which is a htst method these both treatments are required for the destruction of pathogens present in the milk these pathogens are brucella abortis mycobacterium tuberculosis and coxilla burnetii brucella abortis is a causative agent of brucelloisis mycobacterium tuberculosis causes tb or tuberculosis coxilla burnetii causes a q fever mycobacterium tuberculosis and coxilla burnetii these both are heat resistant bacteria but coxilla burnetii is slightly more heat resistant than the mycobacterium tuberculosis because mycobacterium tuberculosis destroyed with the treatment of 62 degree celsius for 30 minutes whereas coxilla burnetii is destroyed with the treatment of 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes so coxilla burnetii is slightly more uh, heat resistant bacteria than mycobacterium tuberculosis alkaline phosphatase test alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme naturally present in the raw milk it is denatured in the presence of heat treatment like pasteurization so it means it is absent in the pasteurized milk but if it is present in the pasteurized milk it means the milk is not properly pasteurized or has been contaminated with raw milk after pasteurization so alkaline phosphatase act as an indicator of proper milk pasteurization let's take a milk sample in a test tube let's say it is a raw milk we know that raw milk contains alkaline phosphatase enzyme 
now we have to add disodium phenyl phosphate it act as a substrate for alkaline phosphatase enzyme and it is a source of phenols so when alkaline phosphatase enzyme acts upon disodium phenyl phosphate the disodium phenyl phosphate liberates phenols the amount of phenol liberated from the disodium phenyl phosphate is the directly proportional to the activity of the alkaline phosphatase enzyme now we have to add 2,6 dichloroquinone chloramide this is a this is an indicator the liberated phenol will react with 2,6 dichloroquinone chloramide then it gives blue color the blue color represents presence of alkaline phosphatase enzyme in the milk otherwise if the milk is pasteurized then there will be no alkaline phosphatase enzyme so there will be no liberation of phenols and no formation of blue color there is no change in the color so it represents a milk is properly pasteurized so this is the basic principle behind the alkaline phosphatase test now the effects of pasteurization on foods pasteurization causes denaturation of proteins and enzymes when the proteins and enzymes are denatured then they become non functional and unable to do their activity in the food products pasteurization also causes small loss of volatile aroma compounds in juices which causes reduction in the quality of the juices pasteurization also causes loss of volatile compounds from the raw milk it removes the hay like aroma and produces a blander product pasteurization also unmask other cooked flavors in the food products pigments in plant and animal food products they are not affected by the pasteurization process so that's all if it is helpful for you then like share and subscribe my channel you can follow me on instagram my instagram handle is foodtechworld where you can find food technology updates and learn new food facts